Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Mm. This ain't nothing but some boss talk. Yeah, you get two intros, nigga. You just that important, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's just showtime. Yeah, man. There he is. Check it out, man. Check it, man. Check it, man. Uh, check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, nothing, we're all going. What's happening, Miss Jamaica? Hey, yeah. man, no, no, no. You don't just start off talking like that, man. Check it out, man. We got a special guest in the house today, man. This guy here, he don't really need an introduction because where he from, everybody know him. You know what I'm saying? They're kicking up dust, man. Check it, man. We got one of those fast bash dudes here. <laughs> yeah, we got a guy here named DJ K, man. What's going yes, sir. on? What's happening, man? Ain't nothing shaking but the leaves and the trees. Woo, man. Hey, man. Yeah. It's good to see you, man. It's always good to see y'all, too. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. So you've been man, watching the show, man. I, I know you be messing with me all the time. So how you like mm -hmm. what we got going, DJ K? Man, y'all my favorite podcast out, man. Oh, yeah? Or a show. Man. You know, it's really a show. That's you love, know. man. Yeah. So what do you what so so what's going on with What you? do you love about it uh -oh. so much? What I love seven. about it, yeah. I love the production. I love more than even that, y'all. Cause y'all make everything. Like y'all could be doing it off a of cell phone and I still watch because what y'all bring to it, y'all personality, y'all spirit, y'all yeah. energy really. It's yeah, just man. Really contagious, you know. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. so much. What do you think about that? I love it. Really? We get, we just gotta keep going, man. We just gotta keep believing and yeah. keep going, man. So, DJ, tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, like uh, what made you get into the music. We want to know about you coming up as a youngster, you know, the trials that you went through getting to the music. What, what's up? Let's talk. Man, that's a long story. Go I feel ahead. Like we got time, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of time. I just Come feel on. like it's a blessing. It's like a gift that was just embedded in me. It just feel natural. Like, I've always loved music, you know. Forever. Like How I, old were you when you got started? As far as serious, I think like around 2012, like my senior year of high school is when I started really taking it serious. But I always dabbled. I think like in 2007, my mom had like a tape recorder. I was like 12 years old. I took the tape recorder and just, I would get on the, get the computer and play the beat and rap the whole song all the way down on yeah. the tape recorder. Cause you can't punch in. So I would just rap the whole song like, Verse, hook, whatever. I couldn't do no ad libs at that time. Cause nah, was nah, just, that's, you know, that's... Who was in the country? Who was in Henderson? So who influenced you to get into it? Was your mom? Uh, you know, she a, whole, she a whole something else. Kind you know of, but I think I got natural genetic gifts from her because she, she used to sing back in her heyday like really well. She just didn't really pursue it. Yeah. Because she had us and she was just being a mom. But yeah, I think I got some good... Genetics passed down from her musically, but I've always been around like great music. Like she would play just all the classic music around the like house. Like what? Like Mary J. Blige. Okay. UGK. There it is right um, there. That's the plug. All you had to do was that. say that right there. They get you all the way in there. So yeah. she was playing UGK. Which song, nigga? Yeah. Everything I'll ride dirty, man. Oh, okay. That ride dirty, 1996. So that was 96, 97. Everything okay. gone down from one day all the way to the outro. That highlight. Yeah, highlight. You got tired of hearing them niggas in, in the penitentiary. That was Bond B brother locked up at man, the time. Man, classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was classic, man. Like stuff like that is just in my genes. Like embed. I feel like it's embedded in a lot of us. You know? Yeah. Because we just heard it coming up. Like all that classic music, you know. So. Even like through the late nineties, all the way through the early two thousands, I think like around like, like I say, oh seven is when I started actually trying to do anything like yeah. a tape recorder. Then I moved from that. We had like a Logitech camera on the computer. I started recording on that, and from that, like we met somebody else, and then we started doing a little bit better on Fruity Loose. That was like twenty twelve. Yeah, I just started recording on Pro Tools until like twenty eighteen. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So so growing up in school, um, did you, I know you said dibbled and dabbled when you were younger, but did you do it in school where kids heard yep. you? Did they yeah. say you were good or did they, yep. what? <laughs> Even when I wasn't as good as I am now, they was loving what I was doing. And I would make CDs and take them up to the school and mm. sell them for like $5. Wow. 
And you get sold out every time. Yep. And that okay. people would be proud to have it because it wasn't like I had just a mass production of it. So it's like if you had one of them, it was like, oh, I'm cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or okay, that's I cool. got a CD and you don't. People would steal my CDs from each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the school. But yeah, that was that was good times. I was really embraced a lot at high school. Shout out Pine Tree. Did you play sports or do anything like that? A little bit, but not really, because I already knew I was trying to do this. So I was. So you already to... knew, even as a young age. Mm hmm Okay, that's yeah. cool. What do you yeah. think is the, one of the biggest thing that influenced you in the, in the music? Uh, which which artists were you influenced the most by? I was inspired by a plethora of artists, but I have to say, um, the very first artist I think I was just I just took to I think it was Prince. I think it was because of the movie Purple Rain. It was like in wow. the nineties, and I kind of related to it a little bit as far as. Well, is it the high heels or the shirt open with the hair? <laughs> None of that. <laughs> Which one of that? But his was it the fact that the he music. played basketball <laughs> in high heels? What's, what's no, up? The music, man. <laughs> Tell was, me what's going on. <laughs> The passion for the music, man. Okay, you know what I'm yeah. Saying? Like none of the theatrics. Of okay, course. okay. None of us could be that. The nigga use big words the and music. you want theatrics you know and all that. I hear you, man. None of the mannerisms. None, oh, none of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was a dope artist. You yeah, know? yeah. He could play so, a lot of instruments. I heard about twenty-seven instruments. Mm, just yeah, just playing all them instruments and being that dope and like all his beats was dope. He then the white music. girl on the motorcycle. Apollonia. Wasn't she white or Mexican or something? I don't even know. But you knew her <laughs> name right man. off. You were watching her. Yeah, you were just watching movie. Prince. We see what's going on. Apollonia. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. So. so go ahead and tell me, where did the name DJ K come from? Um, Well, DJ is just me. That's just my, my first middle name. My first name is Darion, and my middle name is Gerard. My last name Nash, so I've always been DJ. Okay. But you know, like everybody's always... gonna think that you're a DJ even mm -hmm. when you came up with that name, right? But so, you still stuck with it. I added a K. So when I was like, I think it was like 2005 is when I just named myself DJ Killer because I'm killing all the beats. Whoa, you know what whoa, I'm whoa, whoa, Killer! Huh? My rap name, you know, like Ghostface Killer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, kind of like like that. But like, I was like, okay, not like literal being a murderer. But like, hey, look here, man. The beat. We don't you know, know kind of what what what's going on with you, young niggas, man. <laughs> <laughs> we only know what y'all show us. You know, we nah. we. <laughs> I was in like the fifth grade in Henderson. I was going to Northside, and I would write all my. I was just being class writing raps like papers, just long papers of just raps. I just go to recess and just be rapping like yeah endless raps mm -hmm. and I was going by DJ Killer but I knew, I was like in the fifth grade so I knew like you know I didn't you know early on marketing was like this ain't gonna work that don't even look good it don't sound you know it ain't so I just shortened it to DJ K it just felt right and looked right you know, yeah, um, yeah. that makes ball. sense it's just like uh -huh. when Fat Pimp came on here and he had some controversy with his name and stuff like that as well with a pimp it being marketable and stuff like that some people mm -hmm. look at it like are you a pimp and right. it causes some sort of controversy I don't want people too. thinking I'm like just game banging you know, or just uh, you know uh, just a mur mass murderer like you know yeah it's something mm -hmm. to the name right yeah like so DJ K is just short and simple. it ain't you know People don't realize how 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 impactful your name is. Mm -hmm. It causes people to look at you a certain way. It causes you to even react to things a certain way. Mm -hmm. So your name it carries weight. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful what people call you. That's why they changed my name E C E O. Mm -hmm. That that has emphasis, you know, right. to leadership. You mm -hmm. know, we're trying to figure out a way to make it to where it's is is something that's going to be positive and uplifting, right? Mm -hmm. Facts. So yeah. that's that's what it's all about at the end of the day. To yeah. where it goes somewhere, you know. If you DJ kill them, <laughs> yeah, nigga, get the get the choppers out, get the Draco crazy. out. You don't let me get away with it nowadays. <laughs> and you don't want to always because there's a lot of artists who start out with this name and then change their name like every mm -hmm. three years, every whatever. I'm like, some people say that they sh it because they want to show the evolution of that mm -hmm. artist, so it, it it makes them refresh themselves, so to say. Mm -hmm. But you want to always think of that name that's going to be a staple in everybody because people know you as that name mm -hmm. and you change your name they're, they're looking for the old person and not looking for the new anymore you know what I mean correct and I understand that to the 
total degree, like you know. So what do you think? Uh, so when you when you first get in the game, you, you shout out to Mama Scott. You know what shout I'm saying? Out Mama she, Scott. Y'all riding and driving and hanging out and flying and all this other good stuff. You know what I'm saying? You being introduced to the game. She teaching you the game or how the game's supposed to be laid out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you picking up what she putting down. Mm-hmm. Everything going right and uh, you meet some of these big you know celebrity type people. Um, uh, what? Who was the first? Uh, how did it? How did that turn out? I seen you. Sauce Walker been around y'all's camp. Shout out so, to so what? Uh, yeah. What was your reaction? And what did you say? How did you stand on that stage? And I'm not talking about that no damn performance. I'm talking about just the introduction. You talking about when we first met? Yeah, just how you how you meet oh, even Boosie or whoever it was. When I ain't gonna lie, y'all would be amazed, but most of these people are really dope and you know dope individuals you know they show a lot of love that i'm not talking about these damn people i'm talking about you oh you talking about how, how, did, you, right. how not, did you feel about it like how did you react to it what was your thing how because it's something about when i was getting to it i was just basically opening up by saying that they like general like they they're very like authentic they cool people so i felt comfortable and felt love you know like it was a lot of love you know when i met a lot of them you yeah know what I'm saying? so it was inspirational you get to see like you know just shit that just makes you want to go hard when mm-hmm. you go around people with with possessions and, yeah you know, they got these big ass mansions and yeah. <laughs> all these you know foreign it's or motivation what not, or vvs on their neck or it just make you want to shit Upgrade and elevate and like you say, scale up. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And the reason I asked you that is because it is a way that you, when you enter a, a, a the presence of someone that's you you haven't met, don't matter if they don't have nothing or if they have a lot. It's a way that you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. You can either help them to come up or they can help you to, you know, scale up. Mm-hmm. So it it's always a way that you enter. I call it the stage. You know, basically the way a person see you when they meet you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. It's a it's an opportunity in that, right? Facts, yeah. So it's something to a first impression. What you think? Mm-hmm. I totally agree. It's everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. almost everything because you could almost come back from a bat. But it's everything, <laughs> you know, for sure. It's very important, your first impression, because it's like, dang, you know. Yeah, you done messed up on right. some of them. You said, dang, that's not a... No, like, I'm if you met you one, do, you're like, damn, you know? man. Who, I can't think of now that I kind of messed up on or... When I, I don't know, man. Anytime I meet people, I cut up on them. Like, so, boy, I can remember cutting up on these niggas. They I think laugh because they people, know I'm tripping you know? on them. Like, nigga, you come here every time I see you. You got a different <laughs> woman with you. You ain't come here to sell no damn clothes. I see you coming here to try to hustle these women or something, you know, and I go in. So, I don't, I'm really mm-hmm. focused on what I'm going to do. I don't know. <laughs> it's just having that authentic energy and just, yeah. it really, people, your presence and your energy could be felt before you even say anything. So, if yeah. you go around people, they could tell if you want, what type of time they on, you know, if they got a great judgment of character or just, you yeah. know. And like my, like my, like Mama Scott, I almost said my mom, it is my mom. But Mama <laughs> Shout Scott, out to Mama you know, Scott. <laughs> everybody loves her, you know, so when we go around, especially we with her, like, it's just something about her and. You realize, oh man, these man, I love these people like they so you know, yeah, just genuine, love, yeah, genuine, genuine, you know, yeah, because it's hard to find real in these days and time. Mm-hmm. Most people are just in it to try to get something from somebody or figure out a way to manipulate the process. Man. That's what most people are doing. <laughs> they're not looking at trying to, you know, even when they hug Mama Scott, mm-hmm. even when they're around you, I always realize that you know the devil, you know, he he come a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. So he don't come at you telling you, hey, I'm for the do you. Facts. He come at you yeah. hugging and smiling. Facts. So you just never you gotta, know. You gotta play him to the level. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure you watch it yeah. no matter what. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, there can be gen, gen, like uh, genuine people out there who really got the best interest at heart for you. But you gotta make sure that you you gotta be you you gotta be you gotta be wise as a serpent and humble as a dove. Man, you can't, <laughs> you can't just be no. Nah, you can't just yeah. You gotta tread th- lightly. You know what I'm saying? Figure out what's going on because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you 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 know that's your that's your mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these niggas. Yeah, that's your mama. Yep. Yeah, so you don't ever want to let any. I don't care how happy the nigga smiling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, all you gotta do is focus, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you better do. You ever, yeah, nigga, all that don't mean nothing, nigga. I, hey, I'm watching, nigga. 
Yeah, that's where you supposed to be. Facts. Yeah. You know, I'm watching, man. I'm in the cut like a band -aid. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are doing a great job, man. That whole, you know, the the, the whole thing, man. I seen you at Fast Bash, man. All the, everything that you guys represent, man, it look like it's on another level, man. You guys are headed somewhere special. Thank you so much, man. And we that's just... the whole game. You know what I'm saying? Like, like to do what you are doing already, you have to enjoy where you're at in the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most people can't enjoy where they're at in the process when they focus too much on the prize. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got to focus where you're at and yeah. say, man, I had a damn good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we we didn't get to do everything we want to do, but we did a lot of stuff. Yeah, we blessed to get everything we got. That's you know? it. So that's how I take it and just move on, like you say, to the next day. Let's yeah. talk about the music a little bit. Or did you have anything you want to ask? As a DJ, or, no, sorry, not as a DJ. As a DJ. As a DJ. As a <laughs> As an artist, um, <laughs> what would you say that separates you from any other artist? Mm. My mama, Mama Scott. Other than Mama Scott. Other than Mama Scott. We can get real busy. Other than Mama Scott, but you, you, you mean like uh, skill wise skill or sonically wise? the music? Um, man, I would say I got a sound that you can't find nowhere else but. Like from you can't go get my music from nowhere, but me, like it's a it's a certain distinctive sound. Like I guess, I guess it's my voice is what it is. Cause you can't steal nobody's voice, you know. I a guess a lot of people can sound like other people, but it's not the exact same, you know. So and it's just being me. Like nobody can be me better than me. So I'm just you know just being myself is what keeps me keeps the the recipe one on one. You know, if I just be me, you know. I you I could tend to sound like other people, but like we all do is music, it's sound. But as long as you tell your story and it is coming from your heart and it's something that's you making it you like is you and your music, then that's how like everybody because everybody's saying the same shit for the half part. But what's making it sell or making the attraction is just people being them. Like they want to hear certain shit from certain people, so it's like okay, it's them though, you know. So mm -hmm. that's what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, let me ask you, let me, definitely want to ask you if you're, um, uh, if you're thinking, you know, uh, hey, man, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at this, man. You got to have some people that you would like to work with in the game. So mm -hmm. who, who would you like, who would, who would DJ K like to work with in the game? If you had your choice to pick anybody in the game. I get the name of so many people. No, like, I didn't say so many just people. Just one person. Just one person. Ah, right, Lee. <laughs> That's hard, right there, bro. Well, you, uh, you, today is the day. It's you hard. Get, How do you not go get the Drake stimulus? Okay, you just go get the Drake. You, you want that Drake, huh? I mean, if that's the you know the only choice, but I want to work with so many people. Yeah, right? but Drake you know? is a good choice. That would that's that yeah. Like yeah, you nigga, you go on, you go all right. If you, you get have on that one track, choice nigga. and you could press that button and that person would be here for Drake. a feature. Right now, who would that person be? Probably Drake. Drake. Okay. It, it'll, it'll change some shit up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's gonna be. He, he gonna make sure. You know, he's a real artist. Produce. He's everything. He probably gonna. You know, put it all together. Make sure it come out right. Wow. Wow. Is you young, young. You youngsters really like Drake, don't you? Because he like. Like a new Jay Z or something. I don't know. Like a new Jay Z. Now that's why you lost me. Not not like music. Damn Jay Z. No, I'm talking a about new Jay Z. Did you just say that? Talking about like how he's been able to just keep his brand alive this long and be relevant. You know, like a Jay Z. Like he that, nah, nah, know? he better than Jay Z because he ain't lose a Benny Siegel. He ain't lose uh, all of these people that were depending <laughs> on him. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't lose Dame Dash. He's still yeah. dealing with his same uh, OVO right now. Yeah, you right. You got the right show today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He got his same team. But I had to. I don't want. Did you hear what I just nobody, said? But you know, he got. He got the of, same team, mm -hmm. and I think that says more than enough. Says a lot. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. because a lot of people like the downgrade baby, like I always say, Birdman. But all them niggas did that from Puff Dad. All of them. They all did mm -hmm. that. They all shafted the people that worked with them from the jump. Some of them niggas can't even call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can't oh, even man. pick up the comments. Hey, man. But you never know what goes on in these situations. People are human. You know, we still come from the sandbox at the end of the day. We all started from, you know, the same shit. So it's like people are human. We ain't nobody perfect. So people tend to fuck up their relationships. Mm -hmm. You know when you don't, you know when you don't do because it, it, I think some of it is problem. I mm -hmm. think some. I think it goes both ways. Things on both sides. What you think? 
I, I don't think it's just Jay Z. I don't think it's just Birdman. I don't think it's just mm -hmm. Puff. But I think it's a lot to do with both sides. And sometimes people just grow apart too, like creative differences or. Y'all have had that in mm -hmm. y'all's camp. You want to get into it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm an open book man. I ain't hiding nothing. <laughs> you know, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, man. any good yeah, team gonna have differences yeah. and. They gonna move I different. I got that with my manager, you know. Yeah, so you yeah. don't have creative differences. Like when she wants you to do something, you like, man, I want to do this. You know, it's just easy, just simple. You know. But yeah. how is it um, having your mom as a manager? Because then, when you want to do it your way, but she wanted to do it her way, and it's like how a dream. Does that? It's a dream because I've been wanting her to manage me, but she, she's, you know, she was working so long, I just forgot that she could, you know, because she been working like. She works hard. Like before, she was a manager. She was just working twelves and, and making money. You know, like steel toes. You know, so steel toe boots. So to have her now, a hundred percent is really a dream and a blessing. Cause it's like, dang, we always, I always knew if she could like put her full focus on something like this, that we would get the results we getting. So it's a real blessing, you know. Yeah. So. You blessed to um, feel that way because you have a lot of artists who had mothers being and or fathers mm -hmm. and end up firing them because they can't. What? Well, yeah, and, and, and well, shout they out to. They bump heads. They bump heads. They even got to bump heads. Let me tell you something. <laughs> OBO could walk in the door right now, and his camp could be in here, and you already done show weakness. And next thing you know, one of them slide to you and say, "Hey, what's up, DJ K? You know what I'm saying, man? Look here, man. We got an opportunity, man. We finna give you millions of dollars." But we don't want your mama. We want you, man. You see what I'm I saying? Would, that, would, <laughs> this is what this is what comes with growth. Mm -hmm. But mama done took you. This is when you got a bag too. This ain't but when you. The, the you I mean, you got a major bag, but still, that's the kind of opportunity can come your way once you start scaling, like like mm -hmm. we talk about, because people see you. It put eyes on you, right? Mm -hmm. That's man. That's crazy to even think that far, but. It's, it's real, you know, you're no, right. It's you definitely know? surreal. And I just think, like, just the title of being a mother outweighs anything. So, she'll always be mom, you know, period. If, like, that comes, like, I'm sure she would want me to sign. You yeah. Know? I'm going to always deal with her before any business. Like, I'm going to take it straight to her. Like, I'm going to, yeah. you know, honor that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, uh, getting to the music, what do you think is the dopest song you got? Right now is No and You sent me one, but I didn't even get it's, it. It's it no didn't pretend. come through. It's no pretend. It's on YouTube. I'm gonna pull that thing up. Yeah. See, you you got the right one today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm just gonna get flagged. You know what I'm saying? It's a summer song type of song. Nigga say no pretend. And yeah. When did you do it? For the women, I recorded it. I want to say that. back in like and no pretend. April. We just put it out like last month. Like it's on June. half paints uh, page. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's your your favorite. That's my. That's what I think. I. That's what I consider the best record at this point in my and catalog. And you know the yeah. funny thing is, we spoke about this many times. That artists always consider th the latest one their best one. Mm -hmm. They don't ever go back and say the old one is one of my best ones. It's always the newest one. I got one a lot of old out. classes I consider that didn't get that push. You know that I, that could contend for that, but it's just I've never put together. A project like as in this single, the way I did, like going to a professional studio, using a professional engineer, professional so director, that's what you did with going this to song? Miami to shoot it with okay. professional models. Like it was professional. It was dope. So okay. just the rollout was just the best I've ever done, ever. Let's you know? check this nigga out. He talking. Let's see what happened. <laughs> you know what Let's get this nigga. Let's see. This it right here. Let's check it out, baby. Let's ride yeah, with him for a minute. Look at that nigga trying to look good. Say, watch out, man. Y'all got money, man. This in Miami somewhere, man. This yeah, ain't man. in East Texas. You damn to be in that video. Say, man, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at it, man. You got you got models. You got, I'm supposed to be in there. You right. You got palm trees. Did you see that? The nigga look like he the, and the nigga got a hundred and some thousand views on this one. You know what I'm saying? That's dope, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got niggas trying to get on the level that you own, man. Shout out to Mama Scott and that team, man. Y'all really putting some really putting it down the way it's supposed to be put down, man, for Texas, yeah. man. man. Yeah, I like out. that, man. I'm a proud Texas representative. Man, you know, I'm serious, man. Exact. So so you really just rock that thing, man. No pretend is a banger. Man, th yeah. that means the world to nah, me. No, real man. talk. Like, mean, no, no, no. I'm going to tell you if it's weak, nigga. Yeah, I already know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you, like, it's weak, nigga. We got to go harder and try to come back. We still friends, but this ain't going to be the one. But no pretend look like, hey, it's scaling, man.
Yeah, man, that's Thank a good you. thing, man. Yeah. They, and I heard him saying somebody today about somebody was uh, doing real good on the music. I don't know who it was. Oh, it was my partner, Brown. It's Brown. Uh, yeah, I think Real Tune put them, him out as doing well. I might need to start putting me some people out that's doing well. You know what I'm talking about? Because yeah, <laughs> there, there's a lot of us out here doing well, nigga. Thanks, I, I'm looking at the video, the quality. I know you guys pretty much. Jeff Adara, mm -hmm. he's got a lot of experience in this, man. Um, this yeah, is shout not, out Jeff Adara, Yeah, man. this ain't nothing to play yeah, with, man. He, he put me in the game. Everybody that had a hand in it put me in the game. And you guys went one. down to Miami to do this one. Mm -hmm. Man, that's dope, yeah, man. That was my first time out there, too. Was it? And you killed it. You got real slick with them words. I see y'all, them girls, y'all got them around you, nigga. You didn't look nervous. <laughs> look like you was enjoying the vibe. I felt it, too. I see it. <laughs> I should have been there. Shout out to me who should have been there. I won't. I will be at the next one. You got yeah. to man. Yeah. So no nice. pretend, nigga. No pretend at <laughs> all, man. No pretend day. Yeah, man. Next. So I mean, I, I I love it, man. So yeah. what do you? What, what so do when you, do you plan on dropping your next one? My next single or mm -hmm. project? Um, soon. Cause we shoot a lot of stuff right now as a team. Like we we just like clockwork. Shout out AJ One K, the journey. Say look, I truly Chi Handy franchise. Yeah. Of course, Mama Sky and Ghost who's in there too. But right now all the active players, like especially like the, the first two I named, like Journey and One K those, like we Mama Scott really keeping us on the treadmill, like yeah. he's like can I be real with you for yeah. a minute? Let's be real, man. Yeah. If I took you down to Miami Okay. And I did a video with you with right. Jeff Adair. Thanks. Nigga, you gonna work. You yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna be riding yeah. and flying. I did this before, yeah. didn't I, baby? Mm -hmm. I done took budgets of money and took dudes with me, yeah. flew them out. The yeah. tickets got wrong on the way back. Pay an extra three, four hundred, maybe yeah. six hundred dollars. Yeah, to get them home. That's what I do. That's mm -hmm. what bosses do, right? But you know, so, we and we take these people to LA, wherever, and we got them with us. And these niggas don't even want to work. Just walk around. Uh, feel yeah, like nah, it's, you gotta it's, work. it's you know what they feel yeah they feel like it's a staycation they feel like they you know they doing their thing mm -hmm. on your budget nah, you gotta you know? work yeah. but i'm saying is mm -hmm. this is something that as a leader when you put that much into people you expect them to at least at least try mm -hmm. you know what yes. i'm saying mm -hmm. um she's taking you guys to places that some people will never make you got dallas artists you got people out here in Dallas. You got people in Houston that has never, I mean, major players in the game that have never flew nowhere and shot with no Jeff Adair. She didn't just take you and grab no any damn body. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, understand man. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She took yeah. the, the best quality. Nigga, when they see that on that, that damn video, they already know this ain't nothing to play with. You should have went to World Star with it because it's dope, man. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. being real. Like, like the, mm -hmm. the quality is. Uh, a it's it's a one man man thank you, man so that's the thing Shout you have to think everybody. about when you're dealing with this stuff man and and then not to get tired of it too soon you need to shop it around mm -hmm. you need to keep talking about it because ain't nobody else doing it mm -hmm. what happens is just like the clothes in this store you see something for a couple of weeks and they get old to you mm -hmm. but the world you if you really want to mash you need to have that thing on tiktok you mm -hmm. need to have that thing yeah cutting snippets the parts on there yeah. the no pretend you might even well, you know it does, like does say you can't sell the internet out so you really can't ever stop pushing it exactly yeah. mm -hmm. so that's all i'm saying is there should be conversations like you you waiting on genius to call you well quit waiting nigga make your own genius mm -hmm. to start talking about your own damn music mm -hmm. and telling people why you did it that's a whole nother thing Facts. people yeah. don't work and be creative enough to change the narrative of what's going on in today's society yeah, we innovate. have to change the narrative quit trying to wait on somebody else to do it they way and do it your way following the leader ain't gonna work you gotta create Trendsetter. Some boss talk for y'all later. Oh, yeah, that's the truth, because it's just too much. It's the budgets behind this stuff is too dope, man, to, to play with it, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, We're not out here just doing this for fun. Hell no. No, we do this for a reason, <laughs> and we got to do it to the best of our, our ability. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So top three artists of all time, dead or alive, mm -hmm. who would be your top three? Number one. I'd probably go Prince. One. Okay, Drake will be number two. Hell, I didn't heard. I already see what's going on here. Uh, my, my next two is a uh, Fifty Cent and Fifty. Yeah, and Tilt got on here. Yeah, but Fifty. Yeah. Why Fifty? I like that Fifty because I remember where I was in two thousand three when he first came out, 
and I remember the impact and how it felt and I was outside for it and and it just it did something like I don't know it, it would he the one that really like made me like feel like I could do this you know let me, what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. What song like, was rapping. it? What song was it? I just get rid of our tribe, like okay. in the club. Yeah, 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 yeah Stop right out. there, in the club. That beat, mm. nigga. You, anybody could have got on that beat and made that. That was a hit. No matter the beat made it a hit before any nigga even rapped on it. Just the beat. When I heard it on 106 in Park, they were just playing the beat, and I come out the room. I said, damn, because <laughs> I knew it was. A, I, I didn't know what it was. It was like but a I had to hear it. intro, like when you just heard the beat. The beat yeah. was what made that song so dope. And then 50 was hot at the time. So that song and that movement was all together. Yeah. It was over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 then. I thought the nigga was gonna die back, but then I was in the fashion, and nigga came up with a song called Window Shopper, <laughs> and I knew this was my nigga. Then the money thing, I get money, I get yeah. Yeah, all um, that. So he knew how, to, and then look at the nigga, man. He come out with these movies and these these not the movies, but movies too. But I'm talking about these series he been coming out with. Mm -hmm. but, you know, that's the that's the cream of the crop. That nigga is bad. Mm -hmm. Then he got this liquor. That Branson, the nigga doing his thing. He, he just inspired me because he showed me like, okay, you can't stay hot forever as far as rap. And he just showed like me that, okay, you can you can get into rap and open other doors and go through the other doors and still be relevant and cause it still be an icon. Like even to this day, like you say, doing all the TV stuff, it's inspirational. It's you know? very inspirational. Like you don't have to try to rap the whole time. Like, you can eventually move on and evolve and you know put your business suit on. Like he, he people like that, Jay Z, you know. Then the nigga a bully. <laughs> yeah, he's a bully. Like the nigga will fight you too. I see a nigga about to whoop a nigga at the restaurant with his old lady. I seen a nigga do what he don't play. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is not gonna play with you. Like he's a real dude, you know. Like come to him with the smoke if you want to. He'll try you right out there at the wherever you see him, be respectful. Yeah. And I get it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of niggas just really be trying him just to get on too. So, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to Fifty, man. I don't think we ever talked about him like that in here. So thank you yeah. for bringing the nigga up. I'm uh, a really? real stomp down nigga. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, uh, so if you could go back, and I asked some of the same questions. If you could go back and talk to that guy that's uh, 17, 18, you know, and you getting ready to go through what you're facing right now and be who you are now, mm -hmm. what would you tell him to prepare him for that? Man, i tell him to stay down. Stay down. Stay Till he come up. Right, huh? and have faith. You talking about like seventeen year old me? I just tell him continue having faith. You be talking to him from where you at now, and he's seventeen. Yeah, what would you say to him? Just, just keep your faith and keep, stay consistent and keep chasing it. Don't give up. You know, I've heard a lot of people answer that question. Some people say things like, "I would tell him, uh, you know, <laughs> don't be afraid." Yeah. Uh, uh, it's stuff that 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 you could tell yourself. That would say, hey man, I remember I was in this spot if I just did this, mm -hmm. and it probably would have turned out different for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what that question is about. It's always some room for, hey man, I could do a little better, I could have did this, you know? Niggas say, no, I'd do it all the same again. I would, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying, I still probably would prep myself. I wouldn't just go back and say, nigga, you're doing a good job. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I know damn well when I was 17, nigga. Yeah, yeah, nigga, it was a penitentiary of death for me. <sighs> that's what I used to tell a nigga, I remember. I'm like, nigga, I'm finna do this till you kill me. I love it in these streets. Mm -hmm. That's the way I was. And that's not good. I'd have told a nigga, man, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have had to be real with that nigga because he would have cussed me out. I can promise you. <laughs> that nigga was bad, man. <laughs> God delivered you through, through it all. Yeah, so he did. He changed my it's life. It's all good. Because then every time um, anybody can look back in their life and got to a certain point where you had to choose A or B, mm. but you chose B, but looking back, you're like, if I had chosen A, I would have gotten a lot further. Mm. So if you could go back and tell that younger you, say, hey, make sure you choose A because, you know. I feel like if I would did anything different, I wouldn't have made it this far. I don't know though, because I just feel like I could have gave up. You know, like anything that, that would have deviated from what I was like, I always kept the music there. Like I've always like had it in my heart. You know, like, okay, like keep it going. like. I think the longest break I ever had from it was probably a couple years. But yeah. Other than that, in the past 10 years, I've put something out every year. Where can we see you in the next two years? Man, if God says the same, it's hard to see because it's like, man, God will just surprise you. So I would, I would love to say, 
like on Billboard. Ch- I want I want to get on the Billboard chart. You know, I want to hit. You know, just more success. You know, more opportunities, more platforms. Like you know, I want to see Boss Talk be like. You know what I'm saying? The biggest fucking platform. Already. Like, well, it's, it, you you there already you know? and don't even realize it. And the reason I say that is because you just never know. You know, when you look at Boss Talk and where we've came from, we've already, of course, we was on Half Pain. We was on Zay Tobin. Mm-hmm. You know, all these niggas posting us. And nigga, I don't know these folks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> they just like grabbing it and putting snippets on. And, 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 and even, uh, you know, say, uh, Trio talk, no pill talk. He went viral on things he say on here. So hey, I can fool right quick. Let's see, can we get you a viral moment? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that, boy. <laughs> you know, you know, I never forget Trio talk. He wait till the end. I want to say this. Oh hell, nigga, we ain't asking you nothing. You gonna say what you want to say for this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, some niggas is thinkers, man. They be looking at ways to say things that's gonna promote, hey, nigga, this is it right here, and I know this is a good one. If you really wanna go viral, get with Charleston White before we leave, tell the nigga to let's talk. And yo, and, and yo. he'll he'll help you real yeah, quick. Man, say he knows Shout how to get you there. White, man. Yeah, he man, knows how to get you there fast. Test his step up, man. Man, that dude been a blessing to me ever since I did this platform. He wanted the first guest. Uh he's one of the first guests to get a plaque here. Right. Yes. Uh, the first guest mm-hmm. that we we awarded a plaque. We are the only platform that give out re- awards. Um, he was the first to get one, Man. and there's been many. Little Runny and uh, Half Pint coming through, you know, on the 29th. This is people that we we recognize, and you know, that you keep working, little nigga. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know we gonna do that, man. Especially yeah. if I got Mama Scott. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama Scott. Don't yeah. even know she's real. Hey, listen, man. She don't sleep. It's a lot of stuff that me and her about to go through. She don't even realize it. We trying to get a billion dollars, man. We ain't playing no games in Dallas, in East Texas. We need that energy everywhere. Yeah, we so, ain't playing no games, yeah. no pretend. Yeah. Do you ever write down your goals? Uh oh. Right now, my girls. Your my goals. goals. Oh. Nigga, you talking about women? We trying to do a oh, damn interview. It's like she said, girl, not girl. Your, not your girls. She's Jamaican, your, man. <laughs> your goals. Oh, my God. Your goals yes. because you want to write them down so you can focus on them so you know. Just like when I asked you, you know, um, where do you see yourself in two years? You should already know that on the top of your head. Uh, this is exactly what I'm going to do in one year, two years, and I'm going to achieve this. Mm-hmm. Because if you write them down, you know, what God has for you, he has for you. And a lot of times, yes, we can plan certain things and he wipes our plans sometimes because he sees that there's a better plan for us. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing wrong with having a goal and having a focus, something you're working towards. I already know what the ultimate goal is. The ultimate goal is just to brand ourselves and to be a household name. You know, just break ourselves. Like I said, billboard entry. Like, just to solidify myself in the actual game. Like, okay, he's on billboard. And I feel like on these like rolling loud and just to get to that level first like okay he's known like he's official you but know? you need to put a time limit and put a this right now and say okay in order for me to get to that what do i need to do okay in a year and achievable goals mm-hmm. not something that you're just gonna put i'm gonna jump to mars in the next no, year. you, you know what i mean yeah. short term goals say, lead to right, the long term exactly mm-hmm. but if i do this within a year and i drop this amount during the year, and if I expose it on these many platforms in that year, mm-hmm. I know that I can get this. This person will look on me. I can do this. Yeah. So by writing all of that down and having a plan, and taking it off as time go along, is okay. I did that. I did that. I write it all in my notepad on my iPhone. I stay in that notepad. Like it got all my all my plans in it, all my ideas. If if I like just be anywhere, I could be in the kitchen getting something to drink. If I come up with like if I just think of a bar that's dope, like I just go to that notepad and write down eight line or two lines mm-hmm. and just you know I write down all my ideas. Like you say, just my plans, and my goals, and I ain't. It's something about writing it down that makes it come to fruition. I don't exactly. Know why, exactly. But like I, I end up looking back at like a goal list or you know pinpoint list of like goals that I had, and I end up having them all done. Like that's why. So hear that question right now is like, you know, just just the ultimate goal because all my short term goals this year I already did it. Could you, you know? looking at camera and tell us where we can find you? Man, y'all can find me everywhere at DJK Music. On Twitter, DJK Music, Instagram, DJK Music, Facebook, Darian, DJK, Nash, and YouTube, DJK Music TV, or just search DJK space, no pretend.
Check it, man. Say, man, you you in the midst of a, a boss talk one on one interview? A lot of lot of lot of people have tried to get on this show, and we got you, DJ K, in the building, man. It's a fucking honor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I enjoy it every second. Say, you know man, saying? yeah, yeah, this yeah. This was my first interview, I think. Yeah, for sure. This your first? Yes, man. What? Yep. Oh man, we got him. That's yep. family now. Mm-hmm. Now, when you I've say that, that's back, totally different. Off. Like I've been just, you know, ducked off. You know, wow! So, yeah, a lot man. of people have been on here where it's, it's been their first as well. Yeah, yeah, man. We, y'all got the exclusive, man. The thank you so much, man. You yeah, dig. man. You did. Shout yeah. out Fast and T. Shout out East Texas. Yeah, it's man. Only, it's more greatness to come from us, man. So just keep checking everybody from East Texas out and. Number one, fast ENT for sure. Shout out Say, to man. And Mama Scott. Say, man, we love you, man. And uh, it's been, hey, listen, man, we love the fact that you came on the show. And if you ever need us, you always welcome back. We wish you much success, brother. Thank you. You know God, what I'm saying? Man. So check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And don't forget to like and subscribe to us on on um, YouTube and follow us on Instagram. You dig. And we out. So